Okay guys, welcome to this page. This is the page for Croc Sculpting, the second page. Now we're in ZBrush coming in from Maya. And this page really focuses on the details. So it focuses on the cloth wrinkles, focuses on muscles and the facial form details, all the, all the nice stuff. So here we're gonna focus on both the artistic and the technical aspects of ZBrush. Definitely we're gonna explore lines, shape and volumes. And these are these sort of mental constructions that we can use to help us in our sculpting process. We'll also cover a lot of the technical workflow and some of the technical tools in ZBrush just to make your life a little bit easier. We'll do some dedicated videos with fairly simple examples to break them down really nice and clear for you guys. All right, so now we'll go through all the sections on this page. The first being this, the sculpt time-lapse. So here's a 23 minute time-lapse uh, detailing the sculpting process. And it's divided into two sections. One is the rough sculpt, which roughs out the whole form of the character. And the second stage is the detail stage where we refine the forms. In this next section, model evolution, we're gonna take a little bit of a step back and see where we are in the process at the end of the sculpt phase in comparison to the, the modeling stages that are to come in the next pages. So we're gonna compare between the different meshes, the ones from ZBrush, the sculpt meshes from ZBrush and the final topology mesh and do a quick light setup in Zootools, which has some really neat, nice little light presets that can instantly set up these light setups so we can compare the models under accurate lighting circumstances. So this, the next section is reference, 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 using reference for croc and ways that you can think about reference. We're gonna look at a lot of Pinterest images and see a lot of really great art and try and gauge the sort of level and stylization that we're after, explore some extra features like hands and some nice cool stuff like that. So then we'll move on to some really traditional, nice cool art theory. And for this section, it's going to be lines and shapes. And the lines and shapes are really helpful tools for us to see how we can strengthen our model. And here you can see different comparisons between the sort of rough sculpt through to the detail sculpt and final animation mesh and see how the mesh improved over time. So lines and shapes are great, but uh, we also want to think about these simple shapes in terms of more 3D forms like volumes. So this is muscle volumes. And in this section, we'll sort of explore the shoulder area in a nice little example and see how these muscle volumes can be used as simple volumes to, to build complexity. Okay, so now it's onto the more technical parts of the process and we're gonna explore ZBrush in a, a bit of detail. So we're gonna zoom in on some of the aspects of ZBrush and see them in simple isolated sort of examples. This is the base mesh. This is the sculpt base mesh that we want to get going as soon as possible, create beautiful, clean mesh that we can sculpt on. Okay, so the good news is that ZBrush only has a few brushes that are really core to the workflows and Croc was sculpted with only four of these main brushes and they are the Clay Buildup, the Damien Standard, the Move Tool and the H Polish. These tools all used uh, in conjunction with Smooth, which is on the shift key, can really create an amazing amount of detail and different shapes and forms. So this next section, Croc Masking, uh, shows some of the masking techniques that we used in the creation of Croc. Masking in ZBrush is really powerful. It's really handy to get to know it. It's one of those things I put off for a while, but the sooner that you learn good masking techniques, really the better off you'll be in your workflows. This one's a quick little section on subtools. Subtools are really good to be able to manage these in an efficient way in ZBrush. And we've got a few tips here, including some mirroring workflow ideas. And finally, we've got this section on hand polygroups. This is a superior workflow than the one that I actually used when I sculpted Croc. This workflow handles fingers and the, these difficult to access areas when your brushes sort of accidentally affect the shapes and the forms that you don't want. Polygroups are a fantastic way of managing your, your meshes in ZBrush. The subtools are a little clunky, but we can use these polygroups to really isolate different parts of the mesh efficiently and well. So that's about it, guys. That's this class. Hope you guys enjoy, and uh, the next one will be topology.